If you are taking oral pain medication, I strongly encourage you to talk to your provider about the possibility of switching to a topical pain relieving cream or gel. Here at MD CustomerX, we specialize and have been making topical pain creams for over 20 years. The problem with oral pain medication, let's look at two examples, ibuprofen and Tylenol. Ibuprofen, if taken responsibly, typically doesn't have any issues, but taking it chronically over a long period of time can lead to possibly stomach ulcers and even worse kidney damage. Tylenol, on the other hand, can lead to liver problems. If we are meeting for the first time, my name is Dan Zatarski. I've been a compounding pharmacist now for 18 years. I encourage you to share this video with someone that you might know that is struggling with oral pain medication. Again, there are many different options when it comes to topical pain creams. I have first-hand knowledge of hundreds of patients over the years that have used our pharmacy for their topical pain relieving cream that have had great success with, again, very few side effects. So again, if you're somebody out there that's struggling to get your pain under control using oral medications, again, I strongly encourage you to talk to your provider about the possibility of a compounded pain cream. I almost forgot. At the end of today's video, I will be sharing with you two treatment options that I like to use as add-ons with topical pain creams. One of them is prescription only and the other is over the counter. Okay, let's get on with the video. We know this already, I'm just going to state the obvious here. Pain is a, a com very complex but individualized issue that we've got going on. Involves physical, cognitive, emotional factors. Requires individualized treatment plans. Uh, patients every week call and say, or even doctors will call and say, what do you have for a, for a pain cream? And I'm like, I don't know, like a thousand different formulas? Like seriously, like we have over 20,000 formulas in our database now. There's nothing we can't make. Yeah, so it's like, you can get as individual. We just made a new pain cream today, actually, this afternoon, um, for that matter. But um, we want to try to uh, avoid opioid painkillers. Generally speaking, in my opinion, my professional opinion, they don't work all that well. Um, I think most of us will agree with that. Significant challenges associated with oral pain medication, the side effects, the uh, addictive issues that, that can go on, administrative difficulties, non-compliance issues, lack of efficacy. I can spend a whole seminar just talking about the, um, the negative or the, uh, the drawbacks to oral pain medication. So I love doing topical pain medication. Um, just we talked, touched on this a little bit, but there's a lot of different traditional pharmaceuticals out there that have a lot of side effects. We talked about NSAIDs already tonight and how they can cause GI, GI issues, bless you. Um, so that's one thing. They can cause kidney issues. That's another problem. We talked about Tylenol causing liver issues. When I was in pharmacy school, the max dose was four grams of Tylenol a day. Now that's down to two grams a day because we still know no matter how much Tylenol a patient takes, uh, I can't remember what the percentage is, 10 or 20 percent of that pill is going to turn into um, a metabolite that's, that's going to directly damage your liver no matter what so yeah so be careful if you're taking more than two grams of Tylenol a day I would strongly have you talk to your doctor about finding an alternative to that if you can because that's and definitely be monitoring your liver enzymes uh, muscle relaxants, uh, that's what I was using on my shoulder. I was using baclofen topically. Uh, I was using cyclobenzaprine. Uh, nothing was working, but um, those can cause dizziness, drowsiness. Again, if you're taking that orally, that can be a problem. I was just using it topically and no, no issues there. But. And then TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants. So those are your amitriptylines of the world, nortriptylines of the world. Those two, from an oral standpoint, you have drowsiness issues, constipation, dry mouth. It just dries everything up, so you're constipated. Um, skipped yeah, I skipped over. Um, tachycardia, so TCAs are just not a clean, uh, in my opinion, they're a dirty drug. Um, and they attach to a lot of different receptors in the body that they're not really intended to. Um, but I will say we use a lot of them topically here. Amitriptyline is probably one of my favorite TCAs to help with uh, neuropathic pain. So I'll, I'll use NSAIDs quite often, muscle relaxants and TCAs uh, through the skin every day. So 
So benefits of transdermal compounded medication. So we can get customized formulations. We talked about that already. I can combine drugs. A lot of the topical pain creams that I'll make or recommend have at least three uh, or four different APIs or four different drugs in them. It brings down the cost and you're, it's a synergistic effect. I can throw a muscle relaxant in there with an anti-inflammatory, with um, an anesthetic, so a numbing agent and a direct uh, painkiller. Like usually it's four in one, um, it's quick and easy. You can apply that right to your skin. Uh, goes. Uh, you can either I can, I can do one of two things. I can put it on so it's more superficial on the surface, or I can put it in a, um, a cream that penetrates the tissue for deeper, deeper into the tissue. Um, we can do two different ways there. Um, and you're applying it right to the site of the pain. So like if it's a knee or a joint or something like that, you're not taking a drug that's going throughout your whole entire body. I can get that, that pain medication directly on that area and not have it go throughout your entire system. Or I could limit it, I should put it that way. A little bit will get absorbed systemically, but not much. So potential for less systemic absorption. And again, that minimizes side effects. So I can use that TCA or that tricyclic uh, amitriptyline drug and avoid all the side effects by just putting it in a topical cream and putting it on a joint. More convenient, better adherence to treatment regimen. An easy adjustment of titration uh, to meet the patient's needs. So if you have a cream versus a pill, if you have a, you know, you, you can only sp split a pill or a capsule potentially so many times, or you may not even be able to split it at all. With a pain cream, it comes in these little pain pumps. You can squirt as little or as much out as you want. Sorry for the interruption. If you're finding value in today's video, I encourage you to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps to support the channel, and it also helps to get this information out to others that may be needing information on alternatives to oral pain medication. Also, if you're finding value in today's video, or if you know of somebody that is struggling with pain medication orally that's not working for them, give them the pharmacy phone number uh, in the show notes below and have them reach out to me and I can help them uh, and their provider finding possibly better alternatives to their current treatment protocol. Let's get back into today's content. Um, and yeah, so where to apply it? Obviously on the, the joint, I'm going to pick a knee, right? You can put it right on the knee, but then you, there's, I handed out the dermatome map. You can also put that pain medication right on that dermatome, um, and that'll help diffuse that pain too. So that pain signal's not traveling up to your brain. You can put the pain medication right on that little node of that bundle of nerve fibers that's running through your back, through your spine, and help and to reduce the pain. It'll help reduce the pain signal getting back up to your brain to what's feel. The definition of so this is just a small little snippet of some of the pharmaceuticals that we can put in pain creams. Um, I mean, acyclovir. So I didn't, I'm not even going to, well, now that I said it. <laughs> God darn it. But like, if somebody comes in with shingles, Instead of taking acyclovir orally, we can actually put it in a pain cream and put it right on the wound or the scab, how icky shingles is, and you can get the antiviral right into that air, painful area for shingles. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can do colchicine, doxepin, indomethacin, menthol, everyone knows about, paroxicamp, um, all the bupivacanes, tetracaine, lidocaine. All of the canes, all the anesthetics. Sometimes we call it like a BLT, benzocaine, lidocaine, tetracaine. We'll put all three of them in there. Uh, we do that a lot for, uh, yeah, we do all, we do that. Um, here's the, the ketamine is there. Uh, we could do steroids, even though I try to avoid those. Uh, some other fun ones in here. Uh, guaifenesin, actually an NMDA receptor antagonist that can actually help with pain. I'm not going to get too much into that, but right, right the, the, yeah, and thin out the mucus in your throat. Actually, it won't do that, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, my favorite uh, for an anti inflammatory um, is actually, I don't know if it's on here. Yeah, it is diclofenac. So, Voltaren gel prescription, 1%. I actually might like making this as a 3 or a 5% and the patients can just put a little bit on versus slathering it over the whole limb. Um, and I usually like to add that a little anesthetic like a lidocaine to it and that stuff works quite, quite well. So again, getting that, just getting that inflammation down and under control is sometimes very helpful. Um, and avoiding those side effects from the GI issues and the kidney issues. <clears throat> 
Um, I'll skip the rest for now because I think we're getting kind of late. But just know that there's a lot of options and this is, a, this is just a small sample of them. So. All right, so you made it to the end of the video. As I promised earlier, earlier there are two treatment add-on options that I like to use with topical pain creams, prescription pain creams. First is low-dose naltrexone. This is a prescription item that we compound here at the pharmacy. Again, you can ask your provider to get more information on low-dose naltrexone. They can certainly call the pharmacy. Low-dose naltrexone, again, is a compounded medication that can be used to help treat pain, fibromyalgia pain, uh, neuropathic pain, and it also helps as an anti-inflammatory. The second option I like to use is CBD or cannabidiol. This is an over-the-counter item. We sell the professional grade Ananda product that is third-party tested. CBD can be used internally as a tincture or it can also be used topically uh, as an add-on as well. Again, you'd want to consult with your provider or your physician before starting either of those two products. In next week's video, we will be discussing other over-the-counter treatment options for relieving pain. Have a great weekend and thanks for tuning in.